Snake here for Into Boxing and I'm delighted to be joined by Anthony Crawler. First of all, Anthony, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Down here for the Shizuri Pula Presser. Nice part of town, yes. Yeah, settings, mate. Settings, can't ask for much more. Tower Bridge in the background, so yeah. Certainly can't. Obviously, bought that. we bought that Manchester weather down south with us, haven't we? we yeah, mate, we have. It's a bit rough, and I've not got a jacket, so I could be in trouble here. As you say there, we've got Chisora Pulev Saturday night at the O2 Arena. Just break the fight down for us. Obviously, Chisora's been going so long and that, but it's still a massive draw. An entertaining fighter. Always entertaining. Derek always brings it. I think, do you know, even there's no like to a lot of people now who think Derek maybe should have hung the gloves up after um, the last fight with Joseph Parker. Derek, absolutely no way. He's saying that. But you would think, listen, at if, he has, if Derek has aspirations to win any world titles or be in those big fights, Saturday's a must win um, against Pulev. And obviously, he's got to go out there, he's got to get revenge, obviously. Pulev's not been active at all since the Joshua defeat. I know um, he, he boxed once and then it was a crazy like crossover. Was it yeah, Jerry, Jerry, Fro Jerry Forrest, I think it Jerry was. Jerry Forrest, and then did he, did he not fight Frank Mir or something? I mean, you can't take too much from that without being disrespectful. So <laughs> it is, it's a little bit like we're not sure we want to see what each, both unbelievable fighters on the day, and um, problem for absolutely any area in the world on the day, but we need to see who's got more left to push on. Do you think that Derek, well, both of them really, can take anything from the first fight? Obviously, it was 2016, it was eight years ago. It's, do you know what? I didn't realise how long ago it was. Wow. Um, yeah, of course. It's, I think both have changed since then, for sure. And you've got to look, Derek was having like what many people have seen as a real Indian summer, just a few fights back. Um, but, listen, I think there's both, both fighters have changed a little bit since then. But no, without a doubt, you share a ring with someone, you do 12 rounds with someone. Of course, there's things that you remember they've done so well and now they might not do them as well as they've progressed in the greatest things that they might have got a bit smarter with as well. So no, without a doubt, there's always something you can take from the first fight. In a rematch, you can always revert back to the first fight for sure. Can we get a prediction from you for Saturday night, how you see it playing out? Oh, mate, it's so tough. Do you know what? Ask me, ask me after the workout. Ask me after the workout. Is it so tough? I think, listen, I think it's certainly got distance written all over it. But it was... <laughs> Bless you. Wow. Well, um, we'll see. We'll see, but it's a um, we'll definitely get performance. We'll get a um, prediction before the end of this. Staying with the heavyweight scene, obviously, Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk rematch announced for Saudi Arabia in August. Thoughts on that? What does AJ have to do to win? I think what he has to do, I think it seems it's very much easier said than done, but pretty much common knowledge is in. He's got to make his size count. Uh, we've seen the head to head last week at the presser and we've seen it before we knew it anyway and although you it looks like he's putting a bit of size that AJ is much the bigger man but it's all right people going he's got to use his size he's got to him up against a master boxer like Usyk and that's what he is it's not that easy um, but he's got to do it smart and I think I think you'll see what Robert Garcia Angel Fernandez and also he's been part of the team about how they're are they able to implement what what they think is going to work on, on AJ and you know will Usyk be able to have the answers for that, but I think there's no secret. He's got to be, he's got to be a, a lot more aggressive. But he's, he's got to be educated. Pressure. He can't just be literally running in. The use can move his feet. Any fighter would blow up. Never mind someone with a physique and you know the weight that um, AJ carries. But I think he's got to be educated. Pressure. But I think it's also he's got to land early. He's got to land early to um, to get the respect of Usyk. He's got to really feel it, and I don't. I think last time that was a big factor. He didn't, but I think he's really got to land early and make him um, make gain you six respect. Dropping down to your old division, the lightweight division. Obviously, big big wins uh, there for Devin Haney against George Cambosa. So break that down for us. Good win for Devin. Yeah, a fantastic win. I thought he boxed him um, a great fight. It went, it went exactly how I thought, to be honest. Um, and to he just done the little things right, he controlled the distance, unbelievable, and it, that's the problem sometimes with rematches. And listen, you can't blame Cambosis, he got it put in the contract for taking it. But it's, for me, it's, it's extremely hard to see any other outcome than what we just seen last time out. It's shown great maturity going over there, it was well publicised, the, the troubles he had with his team, getting his team over in the build up. Um, he boxed a great fight, he boxed a great fight, did um, Devin Hayner, and 
Listen, do I believe he's the best lightweight in the world? No, I don't believe he's the best lightweight in the world, but then at the same time, you've got to say he's the number one lightweight in the world because he's the man who beat the man. You just said that, obviously, you don't think he is the number one. Obviously, it's a stacked division. It's a division where I think we'd all love a sort of world boxing super series style thing on it where everybody just fights each other. Who, who is the number one, in your opinion? Listen, I believe on his day, I'd, I'd, I'd back Lomachenko to beat any of them. But it's a great division, you know. And people go, oh, Tank Davis, but then it's no denying the talent and the power he's got. But we've not seen him in with those big names to say he's number one. You can't possibly say he's number one. I get people saying, no, he's got the potential to be number one. Well, I don't believe you can say that. And then listen, Haney, Haney's got a style where he'll find a way to win. I sort of said it's a little bit of Floyd Mayweather about him in the way that, you know, he'll find a way to him. It might not be for. The, the casuals are the most entertaining, but you'll find a way to win, and that's a very good quality to have and a hard person to beat. It's exciting to see what Ryan Garcia is going to do. People go on TikTok, this um, social media start, the lad can fight and he can really punch, but then it's mad. I was watching a little clip on him in the bag the other day, and the stick he was getting was unbelievable. And there's so many things he's doing wrong, but he's, he's, a, he's an unbelievable talent. Him, so you've got to, you know, there's, and there's other fights we've missed out there as well. It's an unbelievable division. It really is an unbelievable division. You've uh, obviously you retired. No itchy knuckles. We've asked this a couple. Not not interested in getting Absolutely back. Absolutely not. Not one bit bothered. Not one bothered. I love the sport. I'm loving the bits of the coaching. Loving the little bits of media I'm doing. Uh, but no, um, that's that's where it ends, mate. There'll be no chance of me uh, getting back in there. Obviously, you mentioned their coaching. Obviously, you've got a couple of fighters been wor working with them. How how's that transition been for you from fighting to coaching? It's it's been um, it's been relatively straightforward to me because I've I was always involved with the kids even when I was an active professional even when I was in World Tag Fights I was always trying to work out with the kids so something I always wanted to go into I didn't actually plan on doing it with the professionals the plan was just to assist Joe really for a bit and then I've ended up I've ended up with I'm a little stable on my own and I'm sucked in now for um, I don't know how long well no listen it's it's good and they're like I'm enjoying it with them I've got a good little group and um, yeah I'm enjoying it for all of that's great well Anthony Crawler thank you very much for giving us some of your time and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you again in the future appreciate it mate thank you